Uh-huh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, one more time. Steve Harvey got a radio show. Yeah, I do, man. I thank God for it every day. You know, um, my message this morning, man, is real clear. Uh, it's something that's been on me to uh, share. And um, it, it's it's amazing, you know, um, God can do some amazing things for you. But what happens along the way is, and I, and, I, and I don't know that I mean to say but, but the fact that God can do some amazing things for you, there comes adversity along with it. Every single time. It, 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 it just goes without saying. And I've, uh, I was having a... a, a of a fairly, I mean, well, not fairly, but a hugely successful week. I had never seen this type of hatred uh, before. I, I hadn't seen it. And it was, it's a great trick that the devil does, you know. When, when God is blessing you and giving you some, uh, some, some great opportunities in your life, as all of you have gone through, and it is, isn't it amazing how some negative thing crops up, and that's what you have to Focus on. I, I found out that I don't have to, but you wind up focusing on it and your energy goes over to that to try to deal with it, counteract, wonder why it was happening. You got to make phone calls. What was this about? Blah, 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 blah. And, and, it, and, it, and it, it, it throws you off the course you are on. The beginning of the week, I was so grateful. I was so amazed. I was really thanking God for opportunity. For this brief moment, the enemy slides this, this little factor in there that causes you to, and it requires your attention. You have to pay it attention because you don't know. You're going, wow, man, let, let me see what this could really be. How, how much dirt is this really that they're trying to do? And so it requires your attention. But in that attention, you lose your focus on really all the blessings and the good thing that God does for you. The the enemy has an amazing trick that he does that. And it was and it was in my head, I gotta tell y'all, all week long, man. And I was doing some amazing stuff. I was having such a blessed week, man, in terms of press and PR and where God was taking me. And then when I got back, I was talking with my wife. And then I was talking to a good friend of ours. And they shared something that really helped me out. And they said to me, 
new level, new devil. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, it's something really simple. But new level, new devil. Every time you go to another level, every time you go a little bit higher, every time God has a blessing in store for you, every time he moves you in position, do you understand that the enemy's job is to make you not see the blessing, make you not be grateful for it, lose your focus and focus on this that I just threw in your way, this stumbling block, this obstacle, this trickery. And man, I was, I was, I got, I just got to tell you, man. I mean, I, it, it was so filled with hatred that I had to. I really spent some time addressing it. I, you know, I got publicists on the phone. I said, "What's, what's happening here? Y'all not watching this? Y'all not? What, what, what was, what was this attack? You knew, you didn't know these angles. What, what was? And, and you know, Steve, chill. New level, new devil. If you get a promotion on your job, guess what? Somebody ain't happy that you got the promotion. So here come the hate. You don't even, you don't even really know these people. You, you have no idea. Every time you make a decision to make your relationship with your spouse better, man, this is it. You know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to do this, man, so me and my girl can go on and have this, or me and my man can go on and have this. Watch what happens. Every single time, here comes the new level. <laughs> the new devil, the trick. You don't need to do that. What you doing that for her? She don't appreciate it. He ain't gonna appreciate it. Look over here, man. Look at that right there. Ain't he nothing? You know, he missed, he didn't call you and he said it was gonna, all types of stuff. It just happens all the time. And I was sitting here talking with this friend, really good friend, very spiritual person. And they said, uh, you know something, Steve? You know, I was talking to Jesus and said, I was having this conversation with Christ. And I said, God, for real? You mean to tell me every time that something good happens to me? You mean every time I try to go to the next level, every time you put me on the next level, you mean to tell me that I got to go through this right here? Are you for real? (laughs) And then my friend said, (laughs) Jesus said to her, they did it to me. (laughs) And we just fell out laughing. They did it to me. They did it to him. They did it to him. For him to go to the next level, and you know, I was just some, I, w- I was just going over the whole story about the crucifixion and everything. That had to be amazing, man. Of all the hate he had endured, all the prosecuting he had endured, they thought ultimately what we'll do is we'll nail him on a cross and crucify him, and that'll be the end of him. And we'll put him in this tomb and we'll put this big stone up there and that'll be the end of him. But what they did not know was all you was doing was setting the tone for the next level. Because eventually the stone got rolled away and he went and got placed with his father where he was headed to anyway. He ultimately knew that his ultimate goal was to get to his father. So... When you when you when you thought you were doing what you were doing to him, and you put him in the tomb and you put the big stone up in there, and the stone got rolls got rolled away, and he went eventually to where he was trying to get to. That story is in place for all of us to remember that when we are going through some things, could it be because we are going to a place? You know, it could be just a place in life. It could be just a a, a different level in life. That's all it has to be. But there's going to be the adversarial challenges that come with it. And those are the moments we must expect, expect and take them head on and still not lose your focus or appreciation for what God has done for you. So in light of all of that, I'm able to say today that I thank my Heavenly Father. I really do for all the blessings he's bestowed upon me. And all of the haters and all of the liars and all of the backstabbers and all those people. When you get through lying, when you get through stabbing, when you get through gossiping and doing what you do, I'm still going to the next level. I'm still going. You cannot stop what God is has in store for you. No one can stop that. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? It's just a good day today. In the words of my mother, something she used to say to me on my way out the door going to school a lot of time. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I one time stopped and asked my mama, I said, Mama, what do that mean? She said, every day that the good Lord wake you up, son, be grateful for that because he made this day and you in it. Now get on out of here and don't ask me nothing else. (laughs) (laughs) Praise the Lord and went on with the school. Shirley Mm -hmm. Strawberry. Good morning, Steve. Carla, for real. Good morning, Steve. Hey, crew. I'm looking for Junior. Hey, morning, Unc. I'm right here. Ain't nobody left but Thomas Miles. Yay, yay. I'm in the building. Oh, he's loud. <laughs> what else? What, what Whoa. Else? Yeah, you want to bag your yeah. mic down some? <laughs> bag it down. Bag it down. Hey. Bring the bag it Ooh. Hey, sure. Loud. How's that? That's oh, better. Man. All right. Cool. Huh. Sorry about that. Well, I guess we got that together. Shirley was upset. Hey! <laughs> wasn't upset. You! <laughs> Too early. We just got here. Everybody just in good mood to today? Yeah, yeah. Always. Man. Oh, I'm great, man. Oh, I'm blessed. Yeah, it's Wednesday. It's a short week. Yeah. Hump, it's hump day. day. Yeah, it's already hump so day. Just waiting to turn the page. Wow. Sure oh, yes, that's right. Uh, Make sure you hump tonight. It's hump day. Might yeah. as well do it All on right. that day, huh? No? Don't nobody do it on Wednesday? Do I'm the it, only it. one on the show do it on Wednesday. Every Wednesday. <laughs> Every Wednesday I get a chance. Yeah. Oh, oh like I get denied now. So that's not I every Wednesday denied. then. <laughs> I get denied, but I try. Oh, the request is in. Oh, yeah. Is that what you yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know it was you had to put in requests. I thought things just happened. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that before I got married. I know it now, though. <laughs> you got to oh, put in requests. Oh, you got to put in requests. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it now. You just it was date on night. <laughs> That's what yeah. date night is all about. You got to work on it, huh? <laughs> you got to schedule a team, you know, when you go. Man, you got to say, hey, is you doing anything next Wednesday? You think we, we might be able to, you know. Were you a week in advance? Just, just can you put me, pencil me in? That's all I'm at. <laughs> save I'm she take save the too, date. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I'm telling you. <laughs> Do you think she want us to know this? Oh, uh, I ain't even thought about that. Mm. Well, of course yeah. not. <laughs> Hell no. And but, Tommy, but, but you don't... ain't got to think. Mm-mm. But listen, she ain't listening this morning. You know why? Wow. Huh. School out. They at home sleep. Oh. My daughter's got all school. summer. I can, I can talk trash all summer. Now, come on. In the words of some girl I heard, do you, boo. <laughs> do you know yeah, I love that. Yeah, go and knock yourself <laughs> out. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 all right, coming up at 32 after the hour, uh, it's time for Ask Steve. We got a letter from Steve Harvey Uh-oh. FM. Yeah. Ask Steve, mm-hmm. all right. Coming up. One of my favorites. Uh, we know, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it's time for Ask Steve. Uh, This one came off of uh, our website, Steve Harvey FM. It's from a young man named Leon. He says he needs some advice from you, Steve. He wants to know how he can become a better man, not only for himself, but for his family as well. He's 31 years old, Leon is, and for the last two years of his life, he says he's embarked upon a new chapter that actually scares him due to the fact I am not used to success. For eight years of my life, I was homeless. Now I have a job and I have a place to live, but I lack confidence to meet a woman. I feel like women don't want a man who is a work in progress. Please help me, Mr. Steve. I know if you give feedback, it will be real. That's from Leon, 31 years old. Leon, first of all, a big part of your problem is your thinking process. You think that a woman don't want a man that's, well, how did he phrase it? Um, oh, you mean that's, um, at this point, a work in progress? Uh, most men that are 31 years old 
are a work in progress. So what's his name, Leon? Leon, 31. Leon, listen, man, first of all, take take that off your plate of being a work in progress. There are a lot of 31-year-old men that's a work in progress. It's a lot of 40-year-old men that's a work in progress. There's some 50-year-old men that's a work in progress. And I got news for you. There's some 62-year-old men that's a work in <laughs> progress. I happen to be of that genre myself. Because it takes your entire life in order for you to be who you really are. So, Leon, you're only 31. I think you're wearing this homeless badge as a little bit too long. Nobody knows your history unless you tell them. And you may just be getting a job and pulling yourself together. And you are successful. And you should be applauded. And some women, if you explain that to They'll go, wow, this man pulled himself up out of the gutter. Mm-hmm. I mean, so you got something to be proud of as opposed to shame, Leon. So first of all, stop beating yourself up because you're 31 and you are a work in progress because most people are a work in progress all through their 30s and 40s and 50s. So take that off your plate. Congratulations, you're doing swell. Uh, stop beating yourself up. Get your confidence there's, up. There's Hold your, your head up. You're doing a lot of wonderful things. Stop looking at what you don't have and start focusing on what you do have. And you might find out that you're a lot better off than you thought. Great advice, Steve. That's what he wants I to know. Like how that, to, Steve. How to mm-hmm. build his confidence. That's to how meet the problem woman, be that, to meet a woman. that his name is Leon and he's 31. That's, that's, See, Leon right there. sound like an uncle or a granddad. See, right though. there. Right there. That's why yeah. don't ooh, nobody write ooh. your ass. <laughs> Right. Oh, they Nothing. write me. Nothing. They just right we there. just don't. They just won't let us read them. They write me all the time. Oh no, no, ain't nobody writing you for advice. Okay, well, keep on talking to Leon then. You need to tell okay. Leon change his name, but go ahead. Change you his think. name to what? Change his name for what? Does Leon no sound? Do y'all have any more? <laughs> Wesley. Uh-uh, not the middle name. <laughs> what the whole old ass name? How new is Wesley? Wesley? <laughs> boy, 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 you got to be real careful in these glass houses with these rocks. Wesley. Thomas. Thomas Wesley, my. Okay. <laughs> and that ain't TNT. <laughs> Go ahead, Wesley. Tell Leon why his name sound old. Don't worry about it, Leon. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, you going to let it go now? <laughs> nah, he's scared now. Oh, Wesley? Yeah. The last dude I met named Wesley, I was 15. His name was Wesley McCann. And finish. I don't want to tell you what happened. Oh, you thought about it? <laughs> yeah. You thought yeah, about it, didn't you? Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> he must have looked old. <laughs> Did he look old? No. Nah, look look oh. like a little, little, little dog skin to had a blowout. Mm. Okay. Well, well, Steve, you know, back to ask Steve, I wanted to, since you showed um, uh, the man how to build up his confidence to meet a woman. Leon, how does, Leon Wesley. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't no Leon Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> Give that same advice to a woman who might not uh, have the confidence she needs to meet a man or to meet a Leon, let's say. Well, I mean, here's the deal. For women, it's a real simple thing is I think a woman just has to understand her position in the scheme of things. If you take yourself, if a woman takes herself out of the hunter category, Mm -hmm. remove yourself off the block as I'm hunting, looking for a man. Mm -hmm. That, That requires a lot more confidence than you have to have. And you can about ask any woman who went out looking for a man how it turned out in finding one. Or you can go looking for any kind of man, but finding the one you want, is there's a slim chance of that happening. So what I recommend to women is get yourself together. Be the best you that you can be. Focus first on making yourself happy. Yes. See, a lot of women put too much energy in making somebody else happy first. Mm-hmm. When That's you're, so true. If you put your focus on you, see, we'll, we'll find you. you. We'll you, hunt for you. We'll locate you. But when we find you, 
we need to find a woman who's happy with herself, proud of herself, Mm -hmm. you know, has something that she feels that's a glow about herself. Mm. And can I say this, Steve, in in addition to what you're saying, and I know you know this, but women are nurturers by nature. So we're so used to taking care of everyone else and we put ourselves last. And what yep. you're saying is the very opposite. We have to take care of ourselves as as well. First. You know, yeah, we have to take care of ourselves first. You we can't have to... be no good to nobody no, else right. if you ain't that's good true. to yourself. That's so true. That's so true. And, and we as women have to do that because that's how we were raised. That's how our parent, our mothers were. So we got to break that cycle and take care of ourselves first. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I hope Leon that's meets what I was a nice woman. <laughs> what, Tommy? That's what I was going to say. Coming up next. (laughs) Coming up verbatim. Coming up next. Run that prank back from the nephew right after this. (laughs) You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, guys, in entertainment news, Serena Williams' French Open outfit sent a message to her haters. Uh, We'll talk about that. Yeah. But uh, right now, the nephew in the building with Run That Prank Back. What you got, Neff? Repo man. <laughs> Repo man. We coming to get your car. Repo man. Let's go. Hello? Uh, I'm trying to reach a please. This here? How are you? My name is uh, Robert. I'm with the uh, collection agency. You do own a uh, Sierra 2003 GMC truck. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. We don't show that we've had any payments uh, within the last... I guess about three, close to four months now. And we want to try and stop having to come in and repossess it. Maybe we give you a chance to uh, bring your payment in, but we haven't had a payment from you in about four months, sir. No, I didn't want to pay my truck. No, I had changed some shit financial along with the other, um, the other bank. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember them no more. Yeah, I've been paying all the time. It's direct deposit from my account. I ain't worried about that. Well, uh, I'm with, they've, they've turned you over to, to us. I'm with... Uh, collection agency and we haven't gotten anything from I don't, I don't show any uh any paperwork here on the computer at all that we've had any payments made within the last four months so that's why they no i've been paying it and I, don't, I don't know how they turned it over to y'all without my permission they can't never turn my my, uh, my titles in my truck over to y'all and pay y'all i don't even know y'all well i understand that sir what happens is if you haven't paid it in a certain amount of time it actually comes over to the collection agency and that's what they've done they've actually sent it over to us uh, and they've given us uh, pretty much all the information on you. I guess it's a, a goldish type of color uh, Sierra 2003 GMC truck, from my understanding. Am I correct? Yeah, that's my truck. Okay. Uh, now, what I'm going to need from you today, Jeremy, is for you to come in uh, and make a payment to us this evening for four months, so we can so so we don't have to come in and repossess your truck. And I don't want to have to do that. But I, if I have to send a wrecker out there to you, I have your address on file as well. I don't want to have to send anybody out to pick it up. Wait, Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Y'all not coming in my truck, and I'm not paying y'all for for no four months. I've been paying my truck no all time every month. That's a done deal. Sir, I don't want to get in a back and forth with you, but I'm telling you exactly how it's going to go. Now, I'll come out there and repossess it myself, but I'm telling you. Hey, um, look, 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 partner, slow down. Look, that's not that's not even um, where we got to go with that. Don't be, you don't need to be screaming and fussing and, and chaotic and come get it yourself and all that stuff. You ain't on my truck, my truck that's gonna be that all right well hang on let's back up because i'm a man just like you man what do you mean it's gonna that's gonna be that what are you saying what are you what are you what are you saying to me son i'm I'm, I'm, I'm telling you no son look i'm telling you that i I, I pay my truck note and and that's a final i I don't know i don't know who you is let's get i've already stated to you before i'm with agency and let's get one thing straight you don't tell me i tell you now Hey, hey hey Dude, calm down. We're on the phone. It, it don't make no sense talking, you know, um, over the phone and whatnot. You can come. You can come get the truck. My truck right here at work. I'm right here. You can come. You can come try to get my truck. You can come over here. Sure. I'm already aware of where you work and the whole nine yards. Now, I don't. I'm, I'm trying to be as uh, cordial with you as I can. Now but you can. You not being cordial. You talking about coming get my truck when I tell you I be paying my. So, you know, you should have dropped down and be like, all right, I'm going to check with somebody else and check with somebody else and make sure I'm, I'm right. And then call me back. I'm telling you, you haven't paid anything. That's what I'm telling you. I've got it listed on the computer. You've been turned over, an agency, and you haven't done it. You haven't done a thing. Well, you stupid. You, you, you raising your breath, screaming and hollering over the phone like that. Because that ain't going to do me or, me or you no good. But you ain't getting no money from me. And you ain't coming to my truck. Well, matter of fact, you could come to my truck. I'm, I'm, 
I'm going to be in my truck and I'm going to wait on you. What time are you going to be there? It doesn't make any difference, sir. You're going to get repossessed tonight. If I don't get four months payment, bro, definitely. If I don't get four months payment brought into me, the collection agency, your truck will be taken care of. Oh, hold on, hold on. Listen, man, hold on. If I get that shit with me, you kind of, kind of serious. Go f*** on my truck. Hey, let's stop f***ing at me over this Oh, you quit <laughs> cursing at me. That's what's wrong with you, man. What? Man, you got me twisted. Look, look, my truck parked right outside. You can come over here and get it. I'll be sitting on there waiting for you. Look, you know what? I'm at the point I don't give a about this job. I'm ready to come kick your That's what I'm ready to do. <laughs> Call him back, Kay. <laughs> Hello? I don't need a little scared hanging up the phone. You stand here like a man and you handle your problems. Hey, hold on. I'm at work. I can't be dealing with that man. I'm, 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 I'm not going to make it work, bro. You stop calling my I'm phone. At, I, I'm at work, too, doing my job the same way you're doing yours. Hey, well, well make your money. Do, do your job. Come get the truck. I got one more thing I want to say to you before you go. Are you listening? No, I'm listening. What, what you say, partner? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by s***. <laughs> 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 You got, you got all my teeth tripping in here, man. <laughs> Cause, cause, uh, man. You are all right, man. <laughs> no, I'm not all right. I'm on, I'm on top of this roof, man. I'm, I'm talking to my co-worker. I'm upset. Yeah. You got me about the jump on this roof trying to get to my truck. <laughs> she told me. Oh, she told man. me, man. She said, that boy loved that truck. Yeah, that's my truck, man. That's my, that's my, that's my only transportation, man. That's too much for the work. I hear you. Oh, Hey, man. Oh, man, you got my picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it, bro. You got it pretty good. <laughs> hey, I got to ask, ask you, man. Tell me, brother, what is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. Oh, no doubt. Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> Ta-da. You play too much. Ta-da. <laughs> Repo, Repo Man. man. <laughs> Hey, I want to yeah. say thank you to everybody in Memphis, Tennessee that came to hang out with your boy. Had six shows, sold out five shows, did six shows, and towed the house down. And I want to say thank you, Memphis, Tennessee, right. coming and hanging out with me, doing the nice. doggone thing. Mm-hmm. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Now I'm getting ready. Getting ready. I got about 20-something days. This ain't going to happen. But yes, it is. Let me stay positive. 20-something days to lose about eight pounds. Because I get ready to start shooting Ready to Love in Atlanta, GA. Oh, you can so, oh boy, you better start shooting. I got to drop about eight. I no, got to drop eight pounds. Hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. What do the eight pounds look like off you? Oh, it's so much more sexy. I don't see when, how that can be. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, 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 what was the answer to Steve's question? It's so much more sexy. I think it's it more than weight. If you're shooting for sexy, you, got, you ain't talking about weight. It amazes what? me how my sexy bother you, man. Uh, it don't bother me. I be trying to help you, man. If you want to get sexy, have you considered any form of surgery? <laughs> what kind uh, of surgery? Like lipo? No, plastic. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Abs? I got to uh-uh. cut. Uh-uh. I don't need they no need, They need saws. You I mean, got to cut. do something if you go up for Junior. sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to ain't going to fix your eyes or nothing? What's wrong with my eyes? You no, know, you know they kind of beady. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, man, they sit kind of close together. Steve, people people think you guys look alike. You do know that. Oh, well, man. I got beady eyes, then. I'm just trying to tell him. <laughs> See, but I can live with mine. He keep telling that now. Why you want me to be ugly with you? Dog, you in an ugly-ass family. I don't know what the hell you talking about. You in an ugly-ass family. You know, we ain't got cute men in our family. This boy ready to beat us. Damn, man. Some little ragged ass. All right, look, coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment news. I news. really got news for you, Tommy. You one of the ugliest ones in the family. Right oh, after no, this. Oh. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time for today's entertainment news. Now, do you guys remember last year when Serena Williams appeared at the French Open and she had on that sexy cat suit? Remember that? Yep. Yeah. Well, she said it was to help prevent blood clots after what had been a difficult childbirth delivery and recovery for her. The French Open authorities, however, 
saw it in a different way, called it a dress code violation uh, when Serena Williams will not be um, she will not be silenced. And this year she is letting her clothes do the talking. Serena unveiled her latest Nike outfit. It was designed by uh, Virgil Abloh, uh, the artistic director of Louis Vuitton menswear. Serena's outfit is black and white. Striped crop top, tennis skirt, trapeze back jacket, printed with the French words for mother, champion, queen, goddess. Wow. Nah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Clap back. I love <laughs> Take Serena. that, judges. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't see how they say it when she said war is appropriate. You mean last year? This year. Last well, year. they said it last year. Last yeah, year it they said it. So this is her clapping back yeah. this year. Remember when she had that cat suit on? They had they made a big deal about it. Dress code violation, all that. I remember. <sighs> and that was right after she had the baby. Yes. Yes. Yes, so. I love it. Go ahead, Serena. Go <sighs> on, oh, Serena. This, uh, they get mad at her because she be whipping their behind. That's, That's what, what, that what, is. Is. what it is, Steve. Now, you facts. That's exactly facts. what it is. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Sick of her. What she's mm. not going to do is whip her ass with that on. <laughs> <laughs> let's just cut it out. Hey, this is, this is ridiculous. I want everybody just take a look at what she's wearing. She's beating these girls' ass with this cat suit on. She's got to be kidding me. This is nuts. This is nuts. Who does that? How can she move that gracefully? Look at the power. Exactly. She's pounding these girls. They look like children next to her. This is awful. This is really awful. I'm protesting. Hey, listen, I'm calling down there and I'm going to protest. Why is she allowed to wear the super warm outfits because it's intimidating the kids? Oh. Oh, man. Plan on and when she wears these Wonder Woman outfits, it gives her extra power. She's already got to serve like a man. Crazy. Sick of these African American athletes. Oh, really? Wow. Taking over all the sports. You're not going to have anything. It's starting to let them play hockey, too. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> this is awful. We let them in tennis. What's going to happen? We aren't even playing lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? God awful. We're going to be playing lacrosse. <laughs> I like the way he says lacrosse. <laughs> lacrosse. <clears throat> it doesn't right. make any sense. Let me know when you're quite done. Gosh cause... darn it. <laughs> not the Cheapers. one, man. Zippers, <laughs> zippers. In other entertainment news, uh, Dionne Warwick has been speaking her mind lately. What hasn't she? Is my question. She's always spoken her mind. And what? Uh, uh -uh. Yes. Wait a minute. Wait what a minute. is it, sir? What <laughs> is Dionne doing now? <laughs> well, first she upset the Beehive by claiming Beyonce was not an icon yet. Now she's sharing how she really feels about Whitney Houston's hologram tour. Let's just say she's not a fan of that, okay? In case you missed it last week, Pat Houston, Whitney's sister-in-law and executor of the uh, Whitney estate, has put together Whitney's hologram tour, and it will reportedly serve as the estate's first project under a new deal. Dion doesn't like it. Yeah, she I thinks see. it's stupid, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is Wait, is Dion in, in Whitney fam? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cousin. Steve. Yeah. They're cousins, right? That's what I thought. All right. We have to move on to Miss Ann. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Miss <laughs> Ann Tripp. Okay, thank you very much. Everybody's dishing. Oh, boy. This is Antrip for the News. In the Midwest, there's a tremendous amount of damage this morning left as a result of at least two tornadoes that ripped across parts of Ohio Monday night. Fire Chief Jeffrey Payne says the twisters tore through homes and other buildings apart in Dayton along with trees and power lines. We've had crews doing search and rescue all night. We've actually had to pull people out of buildings, yet with just minor injuries. Now we're going to have to do secondary searches more thorough searches through the community. Tornadoes also touched down in parts of Indiana, Illinois, Nebraska, and Pennsylvania. One person reported killed so far about 130 people injured. 
One of the most powerful black lawmakers in the Congress is fighting back against allegations that his wife's nonprofit organization has violated its tax-exempt status and poses a potential conflict of interest with the work that his congressional panel does. Maryland Democrat Elijah Cummings heads the House Oversight Committee. He calls the complaint to the Internal Revenue Service a baseless and partisan attack. Maya Cummings is chairman of the Maryland Democratic Party. She runs a nonprofit group as well as a for-profit consulting firm. In a statement to Fox News, Congressman Cummings says, quote, these baseless claims come from a group funded by right wing mega donors known for their political hit jobs. The Republican dominated Texas legislature has passed a bill that would allow residents to carry handguns in public for as long as a week after a state or national disaster declaration is made. The state Senate approved the measure, but it was a razor thin margin, 16 to 15, because three Republicans voted against it with the Democrats. Opening statements have begun the trial of Johnson & Johnson, the state of Oklahoma suing the drug maker for billions for allegedly helping to fuel the nation's opioid crisis. This is the first of more than 2,000 lawsuits to go to trial over claims that the makers of opioids use deceptive marketing to get folks hooked on it. Good news, the Smithsonian Institution has a new leader. Lonnie Bunch has been named secretary of the world's largest museum and research complex, and he's the first African-American to be named to that prestigious post. He says he has high hopes. The Smithsonian has a role to play in making this nation stronger and being some of the glue that holds a country together. Up till now, Lonnie Bunch has been head of the Smithsonian's National Museum for African-American History and Culture, which he helped create. Sad news. Remember the uh, movie, uh, remember the Titans, Denzel's movie? Well, that was a true story. And unfortunately, the real white football coach in that story, Bill Yost, has died at age 94. Bill Yost defied the town racist to work under a black coach, Herman Boone, at that high school in 1971 in Virginia. And the movie Herman Boone was played by Denzel Washington. The real Herman Boone says that Bill Yost was the best friend he ever had. By the way, Yo's death comes after the death of another character portrayed in the film, student-athlete Julius Campbell. He died in January. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. An Atlanta police officer was fired after punching a mother in front of her four-year-old daughter. A cell what? phone video. Yeah, this is terrible. Wow. Cell phone video surfaced showing the sergeant yanking a black woman from her car, slamming her to the ground, punched her in the face, and deployed his stun gun in front of her daughter. An investigation was launched, and thank God, the sergeant was fired. But still, what, what was that the... about? What was it about? I mean, why did it he have to do racist. that? Yeah, it's about why would he do it's that? It's because of how so many people feel about a person with black skin. Yeah. It's just as simple as that. There are people who think, not everybody, there are people who think because of this brown skin, this dark skin, that you're less of a human than they are. And they have the right to do what they want to. So skip that how you was raised, you don't hit a woman. Hmm. Where that come from? Yeah. See, that don't even uh, come into play. That's out the window now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, Steve. You know, these people, man, this world, I'm, I mean, we're just in a sad sad state of affairs. Yep. The only thing I'm really grateful for is they got phone cameras now. Yep. As, mm-hmm. as bad as that it. is. Mm-hmm. No, see, but this is what's been going on for years. Tens and twenty yes. t- centuries. I mean, for decades and decades, mm-hmm. there just wasn't no way to film it. Right. This been going on for decades. Yeah, you've heard the stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But now the videos, like you said, Steve, it provides evidence, some type of evidence that this is really happening and this this was the version of what actually went down. Well, you know, the sad part about that, too, is, yeah, there are videos, but sometimes even with the videos, they get off. The you sad know? part yes, of it that, is, that's true. Mm-hmm. is that when these yeah. grand juries and these juries see the same videos that we saw, we see. Uh-huh. Yeah. they never see what we see. Right. Never. I mean, it, it, it'd be drawn down the middle so distinct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's alarming, man. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, in another trending uh, police racial video gone viral story, this time it was in Arkansas, Edric Truitt was in a parking lot of a gas station. He went on Facebook Live after being approached by a police officer with his gun drawn. Edric had his hands out of the window during the whole time. 
the police chief uh, is investigating. Wow. This is crazy, like you say, Steve, what's going on in our country right now. You know the problem with all of these videos? What's that, Steve? It's all black people in them. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, that's the troubling part. Is we don't get to see this happening to anybody else, which can only make me think it ain't happening to nobody else. That's the yeah. damn shame of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, coming up, we'll keep this conversation going. Coming up at 34 after the hour, we're going to discuss more of this, these uh, racial issues with the police and African Americans right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. When we left off, we were talking about the racial issues with the police in this country and African Americans. We see these videos going viral on social media every day. Uh, right before the break, we talked about... Um, in Arkansas, where a man named Edric Truitt was in a parking lot of a gas station, he went on Facebook Live, Steve, after being approached by a police officer with his gun drawn. Now, Edric had his hands out of the window during the whole time. Take a listen. What I do wrong? Shut your car off. Come on. Shoot me. Shut your car off. You want to shoot me? Got a gun. Where? Gun. Where? Shut the car where? off. Where? My hand in the air. Shut the car off. Shut. No, I ain't. Hey, come shut the car off. I ain't moving my hands. He trying to shoot me. He trying to shoot me. Shut the car off. You sh- nah, I ain't moving. No, my hand in the air. Shut the car off. My hand in the air. 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 All you gotta do is drive off. What's what I was doing? What was I doing? What was I doing? My hand in the air. Shoot Why don't you comply with the law? Shoot, shoot order. me. My hand in I'm the air. I'm not going to shoot you, but you're not going to move those hands. My hand in the air. My hand in the air. You tell me to shut my car off so you can shoot me. Come on now. Oh, my God. See, God, see. God, man. Jesus see, see, he told, he told the young man. This was the telling moment. He told the young man, I'm not going to shoot you, but you're not going to move them hands. Cut your car. Hmm. Now, yeah, see. Yeah. And that young man knew. Yeah. He was smart enough to know that if I reach down here to cut this car, mm-hmm. this man going to shoot I'm me. Dead. Mm-hmm. Cause he dead. Because he said exactly what he was thinking. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to shoot you, but you ain't going to move them hands. That brother said, my hands is in the air. But you know, here's you the other the video, part. Right, Steve? Oh, you I saw, saw the video. Yeah. Here's yeah. the other part of it, though. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad this young man has been taught how to behave. Good point. Because he would be dead. Yep. But I have some more news for you. The tragedy of it is, is that I've had to talk to all my sons. Yeah. About how to how to act when they get pulled over. You better how not to, to wear your, your hoodies while you're driving. All kinds of stuff I got to go with my son. That a non non African American parent doesn't have to go over with their kids. They ain't just don't. You could just leave that out. Mm-hmm. It's not even a. But this young man knew. Nah, man, you trying to shoot me? If mm-hmm. I go for my, if I reach down here to cut this car, you gonna shoot me? And he knew it. But shoot him for what though? What is he it doing? Don't matter. Yeah, that's the crazy part. What is? Why he didn't you obey the law, the direct lawful order? Hey, man, what was I trying to do? Yeah. But why is it that you, you're ready to kill him, though? Exactly. You're ready yeah. to shoot mm-hmm. on because, whatever. Because two things. I really believe this. Well, number one, it's our skin color. That's pretty yes. Yes. Just yes. number yes. one. And yes. then I'm going to tell you something else, man. I had a conversation with, a, with some black police officer about this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of white officers not all, but there are some white officers who are afraid of black dudes they scared. because they scared they're going to get whipped. So before I get whipped, I'm going to shoot you. I can believe that. That's, that's, and I've, I've heard black officers say that. I'm not going to say the black officers' names, but I've heard black officers say this before. And it's just troubling, man. It's, but see, like I said before, None of this, it, it's, see, if there were whites in these videos, then we could have a conversation about, but it ain't ever no white people in these videos. The white people always got the guns. 
And the victims so is always black. Oh, man. They yeah, we, we, there would have been another what? police killing. Think about killing. it. The window was up, and he got to roll it down. As soon as he reached down, oh, he going to go on. It's... <laughs> Yeah. But he was the officer was just ready, drawn, yeah. guns yeah. drawn. Yeah. I'm like, it's always to that. I'm yeah. not moving my hands. Wow. All right, guys. Um, it's time to switch gears now. Uh, the nephew mm-hmm. is here. Uh, bring some laughter back to the show. Yeah, uh, I don't want to prank. <laughs> prank <laughs> phone call coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, my sister can't have my girlfriend. My sister can't have my girlfriend. But right now, the nephew's in the building with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? Shirley? Yeah. This goes up to Miss Helen right here, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm glad you said up. <laughs> this is the electric company. Oh, yes. With that aqua boogie current. That's what it is. With what? that aqua boogie Why current. is Tommy bothering them people, having them going all <laughs> over the house? Why is he doing that to them people? <laughs> Let's go, cat. Let your company. Aqua boogie current. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, Quincy please. This is. Hey, how are you? My name is Maurice. Maurice calling you from the power company. How you doing today? Uh, I'm all right. What's up? Well, listen, we're doing some testing in your neighborhood. We're trying to make sure we don't have to actually shut the power down out there. And uh, we're, we're calling around to uh, quite a few people in your neighborhood running some tests on individual homes and making sure the uh, electricity is running correctly. Um, can I get you to do a few things for me and see if we, and the, and the quicker we get through with this, sir, and it's a possibility we won't have to turn your power off at all. I know you don't want us to have to come out and turn power off and you got stuff in your refrigerator that can spoil and things like that. So we want to try to get this done and hopefully the power with the, with the test that we run, it'll, it'll, it'll run correctly and we won't have to do anything, okay? Uh, I don't know nothing about no electricity, though, you know what I'm saying? So No, 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 I understand yeah. that. Don't worry about that. All right. Uh, here's what I need you to do. Now, how big is your house? What do you, how many bedrooms you got? Four bedrooms. Four bedrooms. Now, uh, you have upstairs, downstairs? It's too sore. Okay. All right. So here's what we need to do. Um... If you can... This ain't going to take long, though, right? I got it because I'm in a hurry, man. I ain't going to have a lot of time. No, no, no. This, 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 this won't take long at all, sir. Can okay. I get you to take your breaker and shut down everything upstairs? And we're going to run a test on the stuff downstairs right now. It'll be real quick. All right. Just shut, just shut everything off? I want you to keep the downstairs open and keep that so we, so we can run our test on this thing. All right. Everything's shut. Everything's down. Okay, you, you turned off Everything. upstairs. I just turned off all the switches. Okay, here's what I need you to do. I need you to uh, turn on your television and then turn it off. Downstairs? Downstairs. How many TVs you got downstairs? I got two TVs downstairs. Let's turn them both on. Hang on. Just turn them on? Yeah, just turn them on. You got them on? I got one on. Hang on. Let's try to turn that other one on. All right, they both on. Okay, now you got a microwave in your kitchen? Yeah, I got a microwave. Okay, turn that on. It's already on, man. I can see the lights on. It's got the clock on it. That's got that double Atron thing that's going through there, and it's a whole different type of current. I just want to Man, I don't know nothing about what you're talking about, but I got to get to work, man. So the microwave's on. It's running. No, no, no. I want you to actually turn it on. I want you to actually push like a minute or two on that thing. What's that got to do with anything, man? Come on now. I mean, what I got to do? No, this is a test, sir. What I don't want to have to do is come out there and turn your power off. And I don't want to do that. You got a lot of food in your fridge, I'm sure, right? All right. All right. Hey, look, it's on. Microwave's on. TV's on. Okay. Now, open your refrigerator. Work, man. The electricity works downstairs. Okay, but listen, now, I know, but what we got to do is we got to make sure that this stuff isn't overpowered. Now, can you open your refrigerator? Yeah, yeah now, man. Do you see the uh, button that, that uh, actually has, I mean, you can turn, the, you can push it and the light will go out. You know what I'm talking about? Come on, man. You ain't got nobody to just be able to check something outside, man. I mean, I'm in the fridge. I, I understand, but push that button five times for me and see what it does. The the what the the light button? Yeah, push that light button five times. Come on, man. All right, is it, did it go off and on every yeah, time? Yeah, it's did off it? and on, man. The, 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 it ain't nothing wrong with the refrigerator. The refrigerator is plugged in, man. Okay. Now here's what I want you to do. Right there, if you're in the kitchen, turn your sink on for me. Turn the sink on. What they got to do with electricity, man? Well, see, that's a nitro current. That's a nitro current. You wouldn't understand that, but I need you to turn that on for me, too. Just turn it on full blast. Got it on? I got it on. 
Okay, now go in your master bedroom. I can turn it off? No, let that water run. Go in your master bedroom and go in the bath for me. I appreciate you helping me out on this. Man, Quincy. come on, man. Quincy, I appreciate you. I'm in you a hurry. Me. I mean, everything, it's, everything's working. I'm in, the, I'm in the bath. What's up? Okay, flush that toilet for me, Quincy. Say what? Flush that toilet for me. Flush the toilet? Yeah, flush that toilet. Man, it ain't even that. electrical. What it is, it's an it's a, it's a aqua boogie. Man, look, you need to get somebody. I'm Okay. I'm gonna flush the toilet. It ain't no electrical plugs or nothing in this area, man. Right, I understand that. You don't see what it is. This is an aqua boogie current that flows through that water. Fl flush that thing for me one time. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, all right. Toilet works, man. You ain't got nobody in the area that could come out here and just check this shit out, man. Quincy, I'm trying my best not to come out and 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 and, and turn your power off. And I know you got somewhere to go. Why you gonna turn my power off, man? You supposed to be making sure the power stay on. Right, I understand that. Now, do you have, Quincy? Do you have a blender? Yeah, I got a blender, man. I got a blender. I got a TV. I got a refrigerator, and they all work. The toilet works. Everything works. All right. What I want you to do is get this blender, and we'll just throw you a few cues of eyes or something in there, and turn that thing on for me. Come on, man. We're almost done. I got to get to work, man. Just work with me, the Quincy. I appreciate it, man. This is just a blender. Come on, man. This is some bullshit. Yeah, that's that isometric current. Oh, you should be walking this house, man. Good. You need to check the next house. You don't have no problems with no smoothies or nothing in that thing, do you? You serious? Man, what the hell that got to do with anything, man? I got to get to work. I you understand. I understand. Listen. Give me a minute, man. This is going too far. Okay. Have somebody okay. come I out know. here or do this because I need to get to my job. And I, I, and I understand I that. Job. But I, well, I could just call and have people go through the damn house playing scavenger hunt. I got to get to work. Okay, now listen, Quincy, one last thing. Are you able to shut that breaker, put that breaker back on, and then shut off downstairs and then go upstairs and check some stuff for me? Shut off what? Shut off the breaker downstairs. Go ahead and turn it I'm up. not shutting off no breaker downstairs. I shut off the one upstairs. We didn't turn on every damn thing down here. You didn't have me. I got the blender. I didn't turn on the microwave, the refrigerator. Come on, man. Flushing the toilets and I got to get to work. Quincy, I need you to lose this attitude you got. I need you to get somebody down here to do this. My electricity in my house works. It works for you. Call me. The only thing that ain't work is my ain't at work because I'm here doing this bull playing off and on. Get somebody in here. This works. Now don't piss me off and make me turn it all the way off. Piss you off. My works. And when I get back from work, my still should be on. I got one more thing I need to say to you, Quincy. It better be the last thing. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your sister, Gail. Gail better be in a witness protection program, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Let me turn this water off, man. You got to be Hey, man, let me ask you something, man. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest, radio show in the <laughs> land? That's got to be the Steve Harvey morning show. <laughs> and, Tommy, uh, you call me again, they going to be the show used to have Tommy on. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I went a little too far when I told him yeah. to put the ice in the blender. Yeah. Was yeah, that yeah. too much? <laughs> Flush that toilet. We're we looking for... We're looking for that aqua boogie current in there. We just. But thank you for that, though, because my mom, loved, that was her favorite one. I know. I know. I know. I know. I love my stupidity. I love mm -hmm. it. It's so. It's so it's brilliant. A, it's a brilliant. It's so brilliant. Yeah. It is. A lot of people do. <laughs> you're the best at it. You're the you're the best. Yeah. I mean, when person. you're good at something, man, I get credit where credit due. Say, what'd you say, Steve? When you're good at something, I give credit where credit is due. Uh -huh. I think we right, should cool, bow cool, down cool. to how dumb this boy is. <laughs> Just give me this. Give me, give me stupid got it. and You sexy. got it. Stupid and sexy. I need mean, that. Them two don't even go together. Uh -huh. Yes, they do. No, they not, <laughs> Tommy. I'm that all day. Tommy, no. <laughs> all right, then listen. Thank you, nephew. Up next, it is the Strawberry Letter subject. My sister can't have my girlfriend. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, on sex, on dating, on work, on parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one today, right now. 
Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. All right, let's go. Subject, my sister can't have my girlfriend. Dear Stephen Shirley, I have some news to share with you, and I need your input. I'm a 33-year-old woman, and I have a female friend that everyone thinks is just a friend. But secretly, she's my girlfriend. Girlfriend as in lover. It all started about four years ago when we both were having issues in our love life and we started venting, crying, and holding each other. One thing led to another and it was on. I totally love the experience and wish I could be with her more, but we live in different cities. We've managed to be discreet with everything so no one knows anything. She came to town two weekends ago for my son's birthday party, and she spent most of the time laughing and talking to my younger sister. I was kind of mad, but I had to play it off because I didn't want to cause a scene. After the party, I told my girlfriend that I was a bit jealous, and she said that it was nothing but light flirting because she was trying to see if my sister was interested. Well, after talking to my sister and jokingly asking her what she and my girlfriend were talking about, my sister considered it to be more than flirting, and she is interested in my girlfriend. I was furious, but there is nothing I can do. I didn't even know my sister was interested in women, but she is. So here's the problem. We are all scheduled to go to Mexico for the 4th of July, and I am dreading this trip because if the two of them get together, I would die. Oh, oh, I failed to mention that all three of us are married. Mm. Dot, 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 Mm. two men. What? (laughs) Shall I read that line again? Oh, I failed to mention that all three of us are married dot, 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 to men. We've all been married at least five years. My husband and my girlfriend's husband are clueless, and now my sister is trying to cheat on her husband with my girl. Can you help me sort this out? Should I be jealous or not? Well, okay, I can try. That's all I can do is try here, (laughs) because this is my job. I'm going to try. Uh, should you be jealous? I would definitely say yes, you should be jealous because it does sound like your sister is making her move and trying to push up on your girl. And your so-called girlfriend sounds like she's entertaining your sister's advances. Uh, well, like she put it in the letter, she was just trying to see if your sister was interested. Well, your sister made it plain in the letter that she is interested, okay? That's pretty clear. The problem in in this letter is all these secrets. There's so many secrets. You and your sister have secrets. You and your girlfriend have secrets. You have secrets from all of your husbands. All three of the girls have secrets from all of their uh, from all of your husbands. I don't know how long these secrets are going to last because if your sister and your girlfriend get together, your jealousy is probably going to explode here because you're already jealous just telling us about it. You're upset with your sister. Uh, Your sister has a lot of nerve going after your girl, but then because of the secret, she didn't know it was your girl. Uh, You three are going to have to get together and work something out if you want this to continue. And um, this is crazy. Did I fail to mention that this was crazy? Uh, Because all three of you guys are married to men and, and you're cheating. You're cheating. All right. This is cheating. I don't care if it's girl on girl. It's still cheating. Okay. Because the three of you guys are married. Uh, this is a mess. I'm trying to help you sort it out. I don't think I did a very good job. I just know, <laughs> I just know that uh, this is a mess, and um, you guys are gonna have to to work this out. I don't think your your sister should be pushing up on your girl though, and I don't think you should be cheating on your husband or your girlfriend or your sister. Steve, good luck. I'm not even going to try to straighten this out. It's just, Shirley, I didn't understand when you said your sister shouldn't be pushing up on your girl. Yeah. The lady who wrote the letter. Uh Uh-huh. Her sister sister is interested in her girlfriend. But But her sister don't know know. that that's her girlfriend. I know that. So what you mean she shouldn't be pushing up on her? Well, she shouldn't. She shouldn't be pushing up on her. She's Yeah, of course. She's married. You know that. I'm just... My turn then. <laughs> you know what, Shirley? I ain't even going to... You did a good job. Well, I ain't even going to try to figure this out. 
Everybody know this ain't none of my damn lane. <laughs> mm. Everybody know I don't know nothing about this. Everybody know this ain't what I do. Stop this old it's relationship advice, Steve. That's all you have to look at it like. Well, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. But when it's this, it's three women that's married to three dudes. Mm-hmm. But three, three women yeah. is loving on each other or about to. Yeah. Don't none of y'all belong to each other. And all three of y'all belong to somebody else. Mm-hmm. The church say man. Amen. 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 All, don't none of y'all three belong to each other, but all three of y'all belong to someone else. Mm. Well, in the words of Bill Withers, I'm going to sing a Bill Withers song when we come back. No, you're not. <laughs> you're about to get done. Not, not the one I think you're going to do. You know it is. You finna do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Love it. It fit though. <laughs> you see, but you can, let me just say this, Steve. You can handle it. I have confidence in you. We're okay. gonna have we're gonna have part two of your response <laughs> coming up at twenty three after the hour. Subject: My sister can't have my girlfriend. Uh, we'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. You can do this. Let's recap today's letter. My sister can't have my girlfriend. 33-year-old woman. Mm Mm-hmm. Got this friend of hers that they didn't hear from everybody that they more than friends. They really love us. She love it. The way they be doing it together is for her. Wish she could do it more, but they live in separate cities. Mm -hmm. Got together, have a weekend for her son's birthday party. She spent the whole time laughing and talking to this woman's younger sister, her girl, her girl. I was kind of mad, but I had to play it off because I didn't want to cause a scene. Then after the party, I told my girlfriend I was a bit jealous, and she said it was nothing but light flirting because she was trying to see if my sister was interested. Mm. (laughs) Then I went over there and started talking to my damn sister jokingly, (laughs) asking if her and my girlfriend was talking about my sister considered it more than flirting. Now she interested in my girlfriend. I was mad as hell. Mm-hmm. But ain't nothing I can do. I don't even know my sister was interested in women. Well, I bet she ain't know you was interested in women either. But she is, well, so is you. So here's the problem. All three of y'all is the problem. We are all scheduled to go to Mexico for the 4th of July. Woo! Yeah. And I'm dreading this trip because the two of them getting together. I would die. Then I failed to mention that all three of us is married to mm-hmm. men. All right, now. So crazy. This is too- <sighs> don't none of y'all, I'm talking about the three women, don't none of y'all belong to each other, but all of y'all belong to somebody else. Y'all got husbands. Y'all tripping. <laughs> so here's my solution for all this. We got to stop some of this line. I think all six of y'all mm. ought to put it all out on the table. Mm. What? Yeah, I think all the women I ought to go to all their husbands and go, hey, just so you know, we all care about each other. <laughs> you might find out that there's more caring in that group than you got stomach for. What? <laughs> you might find out that there's more yeah. caring in that yeah. group than you got stomach for. Yeah. <laughs> now, you can run in there with that Come news on, if huh? you want to, but you might get some news of your damn own. Oh, man. Because I kind of got a feeling that one of the men might know something. I bet you one of them men would love to know that y'all is interested in each other. I promise you one of them men want to know and wh- that. And why do you say that, though? Because he going to want to get involved, too. Yeah. Oh, Hell, I want to go to Mexico, my pals. Yeah. <laughs> Where they going? Mexico. <laughs> what part? Fourth of July. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available. <laughs> yeah, we open. <laughs> Three of them mad. When you, what time y'all going to play golf? Hurry up for the course close. But only Junior is single. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, only Junior can go. <laughs> Damn it, when is y'all going to play golf? Don't y'all want to go get some drinks? <laughs> get out of here. They trying to hurry them up. <laughs> Girl, I'm so glad they gone. What y'all want to do? Girl, let's go get naked getting this swimming pool. Girl, I'm going shoot. <laughs> I thought they'd never leave. I don't know why oh these God. men up in here all this time right here. We could have been in this damn water. Wow. Oh, man. It's too Dude. much. God, yeah, this is a girl, lot. I missed you so much. <laughs> Ooh, they get on my last <laughs> man. So laughing, great. girl. What you, mm, mm. Oh, God. Oh, I see you just got your bottoms on. All right. Oh. Oh, that's how we gonna do this? All right. Oh, so we just up in here. How long you think they'll be playing golf? At least five hours, girl. I'm gonna be tired. I can five hours. Oof. Oh man. Oh, this gonna get me. on my nerves. Then I'm we're gonna have to get with man. them tonight. They're gonna get to drinking. They're gonna wanna do something. Oh, I don't feel like them on me. <laughs> I cannot. I don't feel like being I don't smothered. know why, man. He wants to come over here. He don't be doing nothing. Mm. Ooh. He don't be doing nothing but you, girl. Oof, oof. And just go out in the ocean. <laughs> oh in the ocean, dog? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, they can't just get their hair wet, ocean. man. Mm. When you got to get our hair wet? Who said something about getting their hair wet? <laughs> you could just hold your head back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Girl, you could just hold your head back. You ain't even got to get in no water. Sit right there on the edge of that hot, hot tub. Can I ask you a question? What What you need, Carly? I want to know how much tequila. <laughs> Girl, much? we done drank up all the agave. They got down here. <laughs> Girl, I done drank so much tequila, I feel like I'm Puerto Rican down here. In Mexico? Girl, Puerto Rican, we in Mexico. God, that's how much tequila I done drank. Oh, okay. I don't know where I'm in. <laughs> I've been down here. Go get that big blue and white tall bottle over there. They say that's real good. Oh, <laughs> Ignorant. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. So tired of these men. This is. All right. Uh, listen, uh, you can email us, guys, or Instagram us your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM, or you can check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up at 46 after the hour, Cat Williams claims his former employees reportedly stole millions and millions of dollars from him. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. According to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Cat Williams claims his former employees reportedly stole $59 million from him. Whoa. Yeah, that's what? a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of cheese, right? Uh, Kat was interviewed by Jamel Hill on her podcast, and Kat said the U.S. Department of Justice did an investigation to see if there was some kind of embezzling money laundering scheme going on. And the DOJ discovered that Cat Williams' former employees were allegedly embezzling money from him. We're talking, that's not a little bit of money. $59 million. I didn't even Girl. know Cat Williams had that kind of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah, take a, a listen. Paper right there. Without giving away too much, um, in my search for who was this enemy that was causing all these things to repeatedly happen to me over and over again when it shouldn't, we uncovered that it was actually my people that was involved. So we didn't really know that until the Department of Justice started indicting these people for the embezzlement of $59 million. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Uh, that well, I mean, is he saying it was his $59 million or they was in? Yeah, he's saying were, it's his money. F- yeah, his money. Uh-huh. uh-huh. That explains nice. the perm and a lot of other things. What do you mean, That's, Junior? Well, you go crazy somebody taking $59 million from you. You're going to wear all kinds of hairstyles. <laughs> well, That's a lot. How does that you know, how, Yeah, how does th- that happen with that much money? I mean, after the first couple of million, you should notice something, it seems. Steve, what what? Uh, you know, uh, what see, would you do? I, I'm, I'm at if peace one of with us. Pat Williams. Pat oh, Williams good. and yeah. I are at peace Absolutely. with one another. So I'm saying this because 
the way I heard it was they're embezzling. The DOJ found out there was $59 million embezzled. I didn't hear him say $59 million of my money embezzled, but I thought he yeah. might have been part of the 59. Cat Williams has made a lot of money in his career. Wow, he's he made that made, kind of money, huh? He's yeah. made a lot. Of, I, would, I would venture to say wow. uh, pays, $60 million <laughs> over his uh you know, run. He was on a pretty good run for a while. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see sixty million. Yeah, reportedly wow. stole fifty nine million so from him. Yeah. Different. I put on a leprechaun suit too. They took fifty nine million from me. I did not. I I had no idea comedy paid like that. Wow. Your cat was selling out arenas, man. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, I know, but I just didn't. You know, I just Movies, didn't think of the numbers. I just didn't. Yeah. That's a lot of money, man. though. Do yeah, Cat went on to say that the investigation is ongoing and um, hopefully they'll get to the bottom of it. Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, uh, Game of Thrones star Kit Harrington, Jon Snow, we know him as Jon Snow, entered rehab. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The end of Game of Thrones not only hit the fans hard, uh, it hit star Kit Harrington very hard. Kit Harrington, of course, we know him as Jon Snow. Uh, it mm. hit him hard. It's so hard that it landed him in rehab. Uh, page six says Kit Harrington, who played, of course, Jon Snow, our beloved Jon Snow, uh, the true king for eight seasons, entered a luxury Connecticut facility before the May 19th finale. Uh, he had to deal with stress, exhaustion, and a bit of alcohol abuse. Uh, Kit has been undergoing psychological coaching, practicing mindful meditation and cognitive behavioral uh, therapy to combat stress and deal with negative emotions. Uh, this uh, facility cost $120,000 a month. Wow. What? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, what? that's Damn, a lot. That, that ought to yeah. sober your ass right up. Yeah, his wife uh, has uh, been very supportive of him and his treatment. You may know who his wife is. She was a wildling. Um, yeah, the redhead. Yeah, the redhead wildling yep. in the show. Her name, her real name is Rose Leslie. Uh, she's extremely supportive of him. A source says uh, the end of Game of Thrones really hit Kit Harrington hard. He realized this is it. This is the end. It was something they had all worked so hard on for so many years. Uh, he just had a moment of what's next, you know. Yeah, so he had to also, get treatment. <gasps> get treatment, huh? Yeah, I, they're also saying too on TMZ guys that uh, it was a wellness center. He's saying oh, okay. it's not rehab; it's a wellness oh, okay. retreat center. I can explain it all if you cut the music off. Okay, hit it, cat. <laughs> game of Thrones music. Yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones. Oh, GOT for life. <laughs> hell Come on, your grace. Hell, hell ye, hell ye. Hello, my hell grace. ye, hell we are. I'm hell. To set straight the record of John Snow. It is true. What's true? He's in what we call a wellness center. Okay. That's a rich word for rehab. <laughs> That's what it is because John Snow can't deal with the fact that he won't be John Snow anymore. The show is over. The wildlings are gone. The white walkers are dead. Yeah. The dragons are dead. The dragon flew off with Queen Denisy, Heresy, whatever her name Denarius, is. Targaryen. They flew off with the white clear girl. Hey, John Snow, you stabbed her. You're supposed to be drinking now. You stabbed her. You stabbed a woman and the men with no penises were very angry. They wanted to swallow you up for killing the queen. I don't understand the anger of trying to save the white woman. We should be angry with the people who took off your private parts. <laughs> who the hell did that? Why am I so mad? I'm worrying about what the hell's going on. Who took my private parts? Where are they? Your grace. I dare say, where are they? Let's get to the bottom of this. I have no need for this show. And now that I want to go to rehab, I would have been in rehab. Why are you in rehab? The eunuchs ain't in rehab, and they have no reason to live. <laughs> John Snow is gone over there to rehab. He called himself a wellness center. It's, it's over. 
Now they're angry because the show is no more. Mm -hmm. Everything comes to an end. Hell, Steve's show has come to an end. His ass ain't smoking. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been black, Jon Snow. They took Steve's show, and he's on the radio telling jokes. <laughs> your grace. Get some. I'm not your grace. I'm Steve Harvey. Oh, are you? <laughs> I'm not your grace. I have disguised my voice so I can deal with the fact that my show is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I ought to be like, John, so give me the address to the rehab center. <laughs> I'm checking it's in a my wellness damn center. center. I call it wellness illness. <laughs> All of us who don't have shows to be well. signing up. Come on, come with me. Come on, Tyra Banks. Let's go, Nick Cannon. Come on, Marlon Wayans. Everybody, Carmichael, let's go. All right, coming up, more music, more fun on the Steve Harvey Morning Show <laughs> at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Deadly tornadoes have erupted in the Midwest and mostly, most recently in Ohio, right near Dayton, Steve. This yeah, tornado. Man. Yeah, you heard about I've been this, checking right? On yeah. my boys. Mm -hmm. The uh, tornado activity was a volatile mix of warm, moist air from the southeast and persistent cold from the Rockies. It clashed and stalled over the Midwest so far this year. Wow, this is sad. 38 people have died in 10 tornadoes in the U.S., including a combined seven within the last week in Iowa, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Ohio. Wow. Mm. So you've been checking on your, your friends, Steve? You said they're okay? Yeah, we got a lot of partners, a lot of frat brothers over there we've been checking on. We finally caught up with them. Mm -hmm. They all good. Oh, that's it good. It was just north of Dayton. Mm -hmm. And boys live in yeah. Dayton, so we was pulling for them. Yeah. It was yeah. destructive, these storms. Very. What is... I know, this weather. But there's global no climate warming. change. There's no... No, no there's no that. global warming. Global warming, I mean, none of that. Yeah, because yeah, Trump says it's yeah, not true. Yeah, that's what the president says, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's so supposed simple. to believe that? Mm-hmm. Flooding yeah. in Arkansas. Yeah. I know. Right. Donald yeah. Trump Arkansas. said one day, he said, what do you mean it's global warming? It's snow everywhere. Wow. Listen, okay. if you have friends, relatives, uh, people that you want to check on, you can help our neighbors uh, affected by these storms. You can text the word Red Cross to 90999. That's 90999 to make a $10 donation. We got to right. do it. We'll, we got to take care of each yep, other. Put them in our prayers, wow. definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and trending news coming up at 33 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Now, do you guys remember last year when Serena Williams appeared at the French Open and she had on that sexy cat suit? Remember that? Yep. Yeah. Well, she said it was to help prevent blood clots after what had been a difficult childbirth delivery and recovery for her. The French Open authorities, however, saw it in a different way, called it a dress code violation. Uh, when Serena Williams will not be, um, she will not be silenced. And this year, she is letting her clothes do the talking. Serena unveiled her latest Nike outfit. It was designed by uh, Virgil Abloh, uh, the artistic director of Louis Vuitton menswear. Serena's outfit is black and white. Striped crop top, tennis skirt, trapeze back jacket, printed with the French words for mother, champion, queen, goddess. Wow. Nah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Clap back. I love that. Take Serena. that, judges. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't see how they say it when she said war is it appropriate. You mean last year? This year. Last well, year. they said it last year. Last yeah, year it they said it. So this is her clapping back yeah. this year. Remember when she had that cat suit on? They had they made a big deal about it. Dress code violation, all that. I remember, <sighs> and that was right after she had the baby. Yes, yes, yes. So, I love it. Go ahead, Serena. <sighs> oh, Serena. They, they get mad at her because she be whipping their behind. That's, that's what, that's what, that is. what it exactly is, what it is. Steve. Now you facts. That's exactly facts. what it is. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Sick of her. What she's mm. not gonna do is whip her ass with that on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just cut it out. Hey, this is, this is ridiculous. Oh, everybody, just take a look at what she's wearing. She's beating these girls' ass with this cat suit on. She's got to be kidding me. This is nuts. This is nuts. Who does that? How can she move that gracefully? 
Look at the power. Exactly. She's pounding these girls. They look like children next to her. This is awful. This is really awful. I'm protesting. Hey, listen. I'm calling down there, and I'm going to protest. Why is she allowed to wear the super warm outfits because it's intimidating the kids? Oh. And when she wears these Wonder Woman outfits, it gives her extra power. She's already got to serve like a man. Crazy. Sick of these African-American athletes. Oh, really? Wow. Taking over all the sports. You're not going to have anything. They're starting to let them play hockey, too. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> this is awful. We let them in tennis. What's going to happen? We aren't even playing lacrosse. <laughs> What's that? Off. We're going to be playing lacrosse. <laughs> I like the way he says lacrosse. <laughs> lacrosse. <clears throat> doesn't right. make any sense. Let me know when you're quite done. Gosh dancing. darn it. <laughs> Not the Jeepers. <laughs> Jeepers. <laughs> Jeepers. All right, coming up, our last break of the day, and of course, some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey. That's coming up at 49 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Steve, this is the last break of the day, and of course, it's time for your closing remarks. Um, you know something? I was having a uh, conversation uh, yesterday with an employee of mine, and um, and, you know, I was debating on whether I was going to share this with you or not, uh, but. You know, it, it is what it is. I just, uh, I oftentimes I wonder, and you may be wondering the same thing, why your life has so many bends in it, so many peaks and valleys and curves and angles. And, uh, well, you know, Steve Harvey, it's just like everybody else's life. <laughs> Yours ain't going to be no different. Uh, it's just, you know, all of us are at different levels, but... It, the bend is the bend, the peak is the peak, and the valley is the valley. No matter how high your peak is, if I'm on my highest peak, that's the highest point in life I'm aware of, that's my peak. I was talking with an employee, and he had a friend with him, and he was up taking a tour of the lot and stuff. And he stood there and he said, wow, oh man, Steve Harvey, man, I've always wanted to meet you, man. It's such, a, such an honor, sir. He's a young guy, about 24, real respectful. He said, such an honor to meet you, sir. Man, man, I wish my mom could see me talking to you. I said, that's good, man. I said, let's take a picture, man, so your mom know you was with me. Oh, man, would you? So I said, yeah. So I took a picture with him. He said, Mr. Harvey, can I ask you something, man? I mean, you seem like you real cool. I said, man, I was just joking with him. I said, man, I've been cool my whole life. I said, I'm just really, really a cool person. He said, yeah, you are. He said, man, you ain't nothing like what people say you are. And I said, yeah, I know, man. I hear that a lot. I said, people who know me, they know me. The people who don't know me, they don't know me. He said, Mr. Harvey, how do you deal with that? How do you let all these people just say all the things they saying about you? And I want to not say this for me, but I want to say this to all of you, for all of you out there who experience haters on whatever level your life is, because we all got them. All you got to do is be about something, and here they come. All you got to do is try to improve your, your lot in life, and here they come. All you got to do is want more on your job than what everybody else, and here they come. All you got to do is get in a relationship that they don't have, and here they come. All you got to do is put in for the promotion that they know they ain't even qualified for, but you put it in, and all of a sudden, here they come. The reasons for haters can go on and on and on. But the young man asked me, said, how do you deal with that? I said, because listen to me. If a person, Martin Luther King said, A person can't ride your back unless you bend over. I refuse to bend over. Why? Why would I? I said, and another thing, young man, these people, and it's not that many from my standpoint. It may be, man, they just be talking about you. But really, in the total scheme of things, 
y'all, your haters ain't that many. It's that they just loud. They just loud. Hate is louder than love. But who you are, what God has done for you, where God is taking you, what God provides with you is way bigger than a couple of notes from some haters who don't even have the courage to share their name with you because they got a fake page. They don't even have the, the, the guts to put their picture on it. They just a name. So I said, young man, I said, it don't really faze me that way. I said, I don't give anybody that much power over me. I said, how would I allow these people to break me when these people didn't make me? He said, wow, man, you really feel that way. He said, man, because I was expecting to meet you and I thought you was going to be down and depressed because, you know, a lot of stuff been happening, man. That whole thing with that interview you did with that lady on your show. You know, I know who it was he was talking about, but I don't want to care to bring that up. So he was just saying all that stuff. And, and now, man, you don't, people don't, don't, don't want to hear what you got to say about sleeping. He says, so Mr. Harvey, let me ask you this. Do you really think you can't get rich sleeping eight hours? I said, well, son, l- let me help you understand something. He said, he said, but Mr. Harvey, they say, <laughs> this one was funny, he said, Mr. Harvey, they say that you'd rather choose wealth over health. I said, no, I'd rather be healthy any day. But if you don't get eight hours, you're not going to be healthy, Mr. Harvey. I said, son, I know a lot of people that sleep eight hours and they sick. I said, so son, listen to me, man. Don't don't let people shape your mind with 30 second sound bites. I said, you can go get all the sleep you want. I said, you can sleep eight hours. You can sleep 10 hours. I said, man, go on and do you. I said, but if you could get rich like that, I said, man, just write a book because it would help a lot of people. He said, but Mr. Harvey, somebody said, Oprah Winfrey says she get eight hours sleep. I said, well, son, Oprah Winfrey ain't rich. Oprah Winfrey's not rich. She's wealthy. She got money coming in while she sleep. For those of us that are rich, that are in the constant grind and hustle to remain rich, because rich is as fleeting as it is, as it, as it, as it is as you spend it, I said, it just takes a little bit longer, son. I said, hey, man, don't let a lot of people shape who you are. Get focused on who you are. Put your faith in God and know who you are and go on about your business. Because in this world we live in today, a lot of small-minded people got a whole lot of opinions. And it's just a bunch of them. But don't worry about it. Do you. Trust in God and stay you. He said, man, Mr. Harvey, I'm going to do that. I said, cool, because I'm going to do the same. Just wanted to get at to y'all in case you got some haters in your life, and I'm sure you do. Have yourself a great weekend, okay? All right. All right. Drop it, baby. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 